Hi, I am Marina Duarte. It is a big pleasure to participate in this Congress. I would like to thank Lisa Barrett for inviting me for this symposium. Uh, I would also like to thank the Congress organization for granting me the caregiver grant so that I could be here today. And I'm gonna talk about the research on noise pollution and its effects on animals that my group and I have been carrying out in Brazil over 10 years. Let's start by talking about noise. But what is noise? Noise is any sound considered undesirable or unpleasant to our ears and noise can be measured by a logarithmic scale called decibels, as we can see here in this picture. As everybody knows, the auditory perception of animals was shaped during many years of evolution, and it is different from ours. We humans, for example, tend to hear sounds ranging between, between 20 and 20,000 hertz. But elephants can hear and produce infrasounds. Dogs, cats, mouse, bats, whales, and dolphins can hear and produce ultrasounds. But why am I saying that? Just to remind you that the noise pollution, the noise pollution will impact animal communication or behavior according the hearing perception of each animal group. The impact of noise on human health has been studied for several decades. We know that noise can cause increased blood pressure, sleep disturbance, heart problems, temporary or permanent hearing loss, stress, but what about animals? What are the impacts that noise can cause on animals? My research group and I have been trying to answer questions about the impact of noise pollution on animal behavior for over 10 years. Uh, now I'm going to present you some of our studies on, on this topic. It always started with my master thesis when I was studying the behavior of urban marmosets at a uh, urban park in Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais. As you can see in this picture, the park is in the center of the city, in a urban area, and it is home for a group, one group of urban marmosets, the Calitrix penicillata. It is a very common species in Brazil. In this picture, we can see that the park is a green area in the middle of the city, in a urban area. To measure the noise levels on the weekdays and weekends, I made a grid with 45 points covering the entire park. I measured the noise levels over 10 minutes on different days of the week and times 10 times at each point using a sound level meter and in the total I made 40, 450 measurements. So here we can see the soundscape of the park during the weekdays. So in blue we see the most silent places of the park and the noisier places are in the border of the park. Um, here we put together the GPS points that represent the home range of the marmosets and we see that they use much more the silent places, uh, the center of the park, than the, the borders of the park, the noisier places. And here in this picture we see the soundscape of the park during the weekends and we see that there is a difference be between weekends and weekdays. Uh, the border of the park during the weekends is, is more silent, is quieter than during the weekdays. And now we see the marmosets home range 
during the weekdays, weekend, sorry, the weekends. And here we see that they, they use more the silent place, the silent points of the park. To see if the food sources influence the marmosets from home range, I mapped all the trees that they use it in the diet. And here you can see in green the marmosets home range and in the background the density of plants used in the diet. Uh, the blue parts represent the highest plant density. We saw that animals, uh, marmosets, use it more than expected the quieter areas of the park, even though these areas have lower avail availability of food. This study was published in Biology Letters, so if you want to see more details, just check the paper. And there is also a podcast in Scientific American where you can listen to some more details about this study. Now I'm going to talk about the work of a student of, from my research group who compared the spectral characteristics of the vocalizations of marmosets in urban and natural areas. She recorded more than a thousand vocalizations of a group uh, in Belo Horizonte Municipal Park and in a natural area of Atlantic Forest far from the city. In this study, we found that marmosets' fee vocalizations were significantly longer in the noisy area than in the quiet area. The low, high and dominant frequencies were significantly lower in the noisy area than in the quiet area and contact calling was less frequent in the noisy area than in the quiet area. We suggest that the difference between the marmoset contact calls from noise and quiet areas are influenced by noise. Now I'm going to talk about the research I, I did during my, my, my PhD. Uh, we analyzed the impact of mining noise on the acoustic communication of the fauna in, in a forest, in an Atlantic forest area, in front of one of the biggest mines of the world in Brazil. Mining is one of the most important economic activities in the state of Minas Gerais in Brazil. This activity generates a lot of noise through truck traffic and heavy machinery operation, explosions and others. Then to analyze the, the noise impact from the mining on the acoustical activity of the fauna, we put six song meters, six uh, passive acoustic monitoring devices in Atlantic Forest fragment in front of a road close to the mining. And we put also another six song meters in an area two kilometers far away from, from the mining to compare the acoustic communication near and far from the, the mining. Uh, the song meters, the recorders record sound 24 hours per day, seven days by week along one entire year. Analyzing the recorders, the, the, the files recorded, uh, we identified all the noise source produced by the mining. And we saw that we can, he we can see here in the spectrograms the, the shape of the sounds. Uh, here we see the trucks in A, in B we see the sound produced by explosions and we, we, identify, uh, we identified uh, reversing sounds, siren, horns, explosions, and we also made a characterization of the spectral uh, measurements of the sounds. So we saw that, uh, for example, a truck can spend 20 seconds 
to to pass in front of a recorder uh, and it can occupy a, a, a great part of the spectrogram as you can see here in the in the picture in the first pic picture we have seen that the predominant noise is from truck traffic during the rainy season around 700 trucks passed per day in front of the Atlantic forest the rainy season is the breeding breeding season for most species that produce sounds so, such as insects frogs and birds we identified the species of birds primates anurans and bats recorded at both areas for insects we identified different sonotypes ear to one representing a potential species uh, we found higher potential species weakness in the area far from the mine in comparison with the area close to the mine. We also found alterations on the acoustic behavior of the fauna between the two areas, the close to the mine site and the, the site far from the mine. We expected higher acoustic activity during the night in the two sites as usual in Brazil. Uh, because of insects during the night, but we found in the site close to the mine and lower species weakness, but higher acoustic activity during the day when noise is higher in comparison uh, with the, the site far from the mine. The acoustic activity was higher during the day in the site close. Now I'm going to talk about a research that we did in the same area but with a focus on the acoustic activity of insects. We compared the co-emissions of three insect species in the area close to the mining and in the area far from the mining during the truck's traffic. We saw that each time that a truck passed in front of the, of the recorder, three species of insects stopped to call. And the interruption rate was 38% for Anaxfa, 90% of Grillus, and 18% uh, for a species from the Podocertini family. We saw that Grillus was the species uh, more affected by the noise because it stopped to, to call during 90% of the, the truck's passage. And this species also changed the maximum frequency and bandwidth after the, the truck's traffic. During my PhD, we also evaluated the noise impact on black fronted titi monkeys vocalizations. We compared the temporal distribution rate and the spectral characteristics of the vocalizations emitted by two groups of titi monkeys in an area close to the mine and in the area far from the mine. We found more vocalizations in the area far from the mine. 20% of the vocalizations were masked by noise and the vocalizations found at the site far from the mine were longer than the vocalizations found at the site close to the mine. The most curious result we found in this study was that in the area far from the mine the animals show the normal pattern of temporal distribution of vocalizations, emitting more sounds in the morning. But in the area close to the mine, we, we observed a peak of vocal emissions at 1 p.m., which corresponds to the truck driver's lunch time. After my PhD, I started to study the hydroelectric turbine noise and its effects on fish behavior. 
So I recorded the hydroelectric turbine noise and played it for captive fishes. Results showed that fish swam faster, moving to the bottom, and swimming in the polarized shows during the noise exposure. A student in, in our research group is studying the effect of road noise on species composition and vocal behavior of frogs in a conservation area in Minas Gerais. We recorded sounds using a passive acoustic monitoring in an area close and another area far away from a road for comparison. We saw that noise does not affect species composition, but vocalization rates were different between the sites. We also saw that road noise masks the vocalizations of all the identified species by occupying the same frequency range of the vocalizations. Therefore, it can affect the species' breeding behavior. In conclusion, our research showed that noise can affect home range and use of space by, by animals, species weakness and composition, communication by interrupting and changing the temporal and spectral characteristics of vocalizations. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me by email marinaduarte.pucminas.br Bye!